if this works it uh, will almost be a miracle I couldn't find one exactly like my boat but there's a couple that are very very similar up there is the shifter cable and it goes uh, the shifter bellows needs to be changed and I couldn't find it back there I thought I was gonna have to pull this riser off but thankfully I was able to find out where it is in here this right here has a protective sheathing around it and I thought it was back there but I totally I finally found it is right here and I'm gonna take that protective sheathing off and uh, since I'm shooting this with my, just my phone, it's gonna be, I can't show you the work, but I'm gonna unthread that, and then we'll continue the work. Hopefully I can do this. This will save me about $1,000, maybe more. Okay, there's step one completed. A little, a little easier than I thought. Now, step two is over here. And once again, I've seen guys do this, and it's kind of weird trying to figure out what they're talking about, but when you see it in real life, it kind of makes a little more sense. Um, this has to come off and I heard him talk about a cotter pin but what I see is a cotter pin back there is uh, right there going straight up and down and that holds that little brass piece as you can see there's a brass piece there and that'll let that slide out so once again I'll just do it and show you where I am when I get done okay no earthly clue to what that thing does but it was totally in the way of me getting that clip out of there. So I just removed it. And so now this thing should just slide right off. Well, it did. Um, so now the next thing is to move that, uh, hold some pliers on there, take that jam nut right there, and then we'll get that loosened. Uh, actually first, before we do that, these little little square things here hold the cable in so I'll loosen that up with a crescent wrench then loosen that and hopefully unscrew this whole thing off of there and that did come off it's uh once I loosened that and that it released from off of this cable right here and it just slid right off now just to undo that jam nut up there and unscrew this whole thing right here off of there well as advertised like the internet shows you just loosen up that jam nut and just turn this and it unscrews from that and now we'll take that whole thing off now the good news is that distance there is the adjustment I didn't mess with that at all I just loosened that jam nut right there unscrewed this whole shebang and now we'll set that down as well so what I'm gonna do now is get a some sort of wire or fishing line on here and when I pull it out through the back it will at least hopefully follow the same path so that I could pull it back through the same path wish me luck boys and girls okay so this is what I've done I've uh, wrapped fishing not fishing line but uh, a roll of this heavy kite string or whatever kind of string it is and hopefully that will be like my fish tape to get through there now it's time to start pulling it out the back okay so here's where the shifter bellows is uh, you can see this is it's been torn I tried to do some stuff but we're gonna get that off of there and the key to this they say is to not kink this hose as I pull this hose not hose cable as I pull the cable out not to kink it so the cable is right there all right let's let's get this a whirl all right guys I am absolutely shocked amazed thrilled it was a little hard getting it through there with that I see that that little part right there barely makes it in so you got to keep that Kind of about that size so i went up over it so don't do that okay so the bellows is off and now i've got to clean this off which is where i tried to fix it get the clamp off 
and uh, thread the new bellows on. Okay, I slid the bellows on, and guys, I've never seen anybody on YouTube do this, but that hole in that top of that thing is really small, and they a lot of people have greased it and oiled it. So what I did, I went and heated up a, a cup of water in the microwave, got it real hot, and then I put a little grease, green grease, on the end of here, slid it on there while it was hot, and that really expanded that to where I could roll it on, and I pushed it all the way up to here. And now I'm gonna put the clamps on this thing and hook it up to the string and pull it through. Now the reason I'm not showing all the steps, guys, is I'm filming this on my phone, so I don't have a third hand. So that's why I'm showing it like this. So here we go. Guys, I got my helper with me to help pull the string. It's in there. The bellows is in, the ring. Okay, so I got the cable back in. So now uh, it's a matter of hook it, hooking it back up. Folks, I uh, had my helper pull the string up here while I pushed. And now it's back up, and now it's just time to hook the thing back up. Guys, I think I just saved a grand. This is awesome. All right, guys, so on the way out, at least I got somebody to help me film. So this goes on here like this, and now we'll screw that back onto here. And now all we got to do is tighten that set screw. I didn't change the distance here, so this should be perfect with that set screw. Okay, now the next thing is this that goes on. And now we'll tighten these up. All right, I've got all this button back up. Um, got everything situated like it came off. The last thing to do is to put this on, on the cable down there. And then we'll um, epoxy the outside and clamp it. We'll call it done. And there it is. Outdrive is down. It's installed, has a zip tie on it. Uh, the guy at the marina told me, use a zip tie and not the thing unless you have the special tool, which I do not. So, I think that might be it. Well, there's an adage. The second happiest day of your life is when you buy your boat, and the happiest day is when you sell it. So here's the deal. I fixed the bellows, put this down, put the drive down to start it. Drive won't go up. Also, it hydrolocked immediately and I thought, what's going on? Now my oil was higher than normal and I thought maybe some, you know, gas had leaked down in there, but it had rained and I didn't have the cover like that. I had misplaced that stake and it just was puddled of water in there. When I opened up the, um, when I opened up the compartment, the bilge was had a lot of water in it and I didn't have the cover on top of the carburetor. And I drained about two gallons of water out of the engine right now. Took the spark plugs out, three of the cylinders start pouring out water and I'm like, oh no. So I got the motor to spin just about that much by hand. Uh, I have no idea what's gonna happen now, but ugh, 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 ugh. I thought I was gonna have my boat in the water here, but it's gonna be a while now. I'm, I'm working on it, trying to see if I can get it running again. Okay, good news, boys and girls. Uh, I messed with the trim motor and I pulled off this little sending thing. You can see there's marine grease in there. I had greased that and I must have got too much uh, behind there. And now this, uh, this metal piece and this metal piece is not making contact. So all I got to do is clean that grease up, put this back on. And boy, 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 we're good on the trim motor. Now for the motor itself. And all I have to do is rebuild this 
nasty carburetor. It had water down in there, of course. That rusted some stuff out. So I got a rebuilt kit coming on the way. It runs on bottle feeding it with that bottle, just, just squeezing it in there, runs like a champ. So the engine is good. Just got to get the carburetor back together and uh, the boat is good. So anyway, something that turned out that was so bad, thankfully, it's just a simple fix. Once again, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time.